When I play out every week, I take my Yamaha PSR keyboard with me. And I used to use that old X stand that you can buy fairly cheap. But the thing is a little wobbly because one of the cushions came off. Doesn't quite fit. Every once in a while it slides. So I said, I need a good keyboard stand that's going to look nice and it's going to fit my keyboard. So this is how I came up with this project, the music keyboard stand. It's got three panels and it's held together by cross dowels and connecting bolts. Hardware that's readily available at Home Depot, Lowe's, or places like that, and is really strong. This puppy will not move once you put it together. And in addition to that, it's easy to carry, it's light, and it folds up. And you only need a single 532nd inch Allen key to put it together. And the Allen key even fits into one of the panels so you can't lose it. So for about the price of one of those X stands, I got myself my own personal good looking musical keyboard stand. I've adjusted the dimensions of the keyboard stand to match my height and the two slots under the PSR keyboard so it fits perfectly and doesn't wobble around. So let's get started building the keyboard music stand. Now here's a connecting bolt. This one's 50 millimeters long, but I realize now that the 40 millimeter size is better. It's available too, and it also screws right into the quarter by 20 cross dowel. Now in this demonstration piece, the vertical part is one of the side panels, and the horizontal part is the front panel. To let the connecting bolt go through, I drilled a quarter inch hole and wiggled the bit around a little bit to make a clearance hole. But if you have it, you could also use a 932nd inch bit. The final hole we have to drill is a teeny bit tricky because even though it's just a 3 8 inch diameter, it can only go down 5 eighths of an inch. If it goes down anymore, it's going to go through the back of the panel. So you've got to be real careful doing this. However, if you have a Forstner bit, it's really easy because the Forstner bit doesn't have a tip like a regular drill bit. Now you notice I aligned the slot in the cross dowel with the hole that was drilled in the end. This aligns the cross dowel so it will accept the connecting bolt. And when you screw that together, this thing is really solid. Back to the 3 8 inch hole, its center has to be aligned with the center of the hole in the end, otherwise you'll have a hard time fitting in the connecting bolt. So here's the wood I got to make the keyboard stand. A number of 1x3s, a 1x2, and a 2x4 piece of quarter inch plywood. Now, I'm not going to give you the, the dimensions because it was uh, particular to the dimensions that I used, but I'm going to provide a PDF that will help you figure out what dimensions you need. Here's the pieces that I cut out, and I'll cut out the uh, quarter inch plywood a little later. So now we're going to fabricate the panels, and in order to do that, we've got to make a slot on one side to accept the quarter inch plywood. So I set the saw to be about almost in the middle, run it through, turn it end for end, and run it through again. And that makes a slot. And I check it against the quarter inch. Uh, first I check it to make sure that it's down 3 eighths of an inch, is what I want. And then I check it to see if it's uh, going to accept the quarter inch panel. Now it's a little too small, so I move the, uh, the fence over a little bit and keep on edging up to it until I get it the slot, that is, wide enough to accept the quarter inch panel. And as you can see here, the slot is pretty good, accepts the quarter inch panel, but it's not too tight. So I've done that to the top and bottom pieces of the side panels and the side pieces of the front panel. But in each case, I, ought to, I also have to put those slots on the ends. So without readjusting the, the table saw, I'm just running them through again till they're all done. And there they are. Now I've uh, mocked up one of the panels on the side and I've measured and uh, cut the panel 
so that it'll slide right in. And there it goes. You know, it's, notice it slides easily, and everything fits together nicely. Now there's some rectangular holes on the end, so I've cut a three-quarter inch wide piece of wood, and I've made it thick enough so it'll fit right in that hole. And now I'm going to mark it and then cut enough of those little pieces so that they'll fit right in there. Then I'm going to glue everything together to make a nice solid panel that's nice and square. Now the side panels each have a foot and I've cut the material out of one by two material and then I'm going to position those smaller pieces under there to make sure they fit and take them back out and glue them onto that long piece. And the idea is to position them so that they're fairly snug against the side panel, but not too tight. That way, when we put the foot together with the side panel, it'll be nice and sturdy and nice and stable. So here it is. I have it uh, clamped up. Just to check one more time, it fits over the side panel and it's not too loose. Now we're going to drill the holes for the cross dowel and the connecting bolts. I have a half inch spacer there because I want the front piece to be down a half inch from the sides. Now I take a 1 16th or a slightly larger bit and I run it through in the appropriate point and I run it into the front panel. So now those two holes are lined up. Now I bring the center around to the side and place a mark a half inch back from the end. And that's where I'm going to drill the 3 8 inch hole for the cross dowel. And I, build, I put a pilot hole there and I'm ready to go. Now as before when I showed you the samples, I drilled a quarter inch hole through the side panel and I've also drilled a quarter inch hole into the end of the center panel. And you notice, uh, finally, I've drilled the 3 8 inch hole, but not all the way through. Now I can insert the cross dowel and align the slot so that it'll accept the connecting bolt. Here we go, we'll align the slot. And now we can put this one together. We position it and we can put that together. When that's done, we can do the same thing for the other three positions on the front panel. Now I took a little liberty with the feet. I cut them, made them a little uh, pointy, because that's the way I like the way it looked. But you notice I put the feet onto the side panel and I screwed it in place with one and a quarter inch drywall screws. After it was all done, I didn't like to finish that much, so I refinished it. I used silver metallic paint for the panels, and I freshened up the black paint, and I made everything black on the inside of the panels. There's that quarter inch hole that I put the uh, Allen key into. You can put it any way you want, no problem. Notice the inside is all black because you don't really need that silver paint on the inside. So why not build one of your own? You get a really classic keyboard stand and it's not really that expensive or not really that hard. So that's it. But don't forget to email me at brodefinjr at optimum.net if you want to receive that PDF with the build info. Take care.